So next, I'm going to change the oil, but here's the dilemma. See how far back the oil pan is versus the drain. So I have to make something. Tape it to here, so it'll drain into there. So there's a few things you could use. You can use an empty soda bottle, like a 20 ounce one. You cut it in half. I went into my recycle bin and grabbed some plastic. This one here was too short. I thought, thought I could use the length of it this way, but that's not gonna work. So, how that goes. Here's the thing for salad. And this will work. Just cut here and cut up here and just cut a groove. Peace out. So let's do that. There we go. So I'm just going to tape this to the frame and oil will just run down this into the oil pan. Now, if you don't even have anything plastic, you can use aluminum foil. Just fold it like four or five times and then just create a V to it. And that'll work as well. So there you go. Just tape it on and it'll drain into your oil pan. Well, we're going to let that drain and I'm just going to put the oil in so you don't need to watch this because it's coming out slow. There's supposed to be a quart of oil in here. So the oil has been changed. Uh, put in Kawasaki regular oil, SAE. <clears throat> Took this out. Ran for a good 10, probably a good 5-10 minutes. Started up fine. Then I pressure washed the whole engine for the second time. Started it up, got a 50 foot strip of grass, parked it so I can load it up on my trailer and it would not start up again. Or not again, it would not start up. So I did a spark test, which is taking this inline spark tester and the way it works is you can plug your spark plug wire, spark tester, goes in and then your spark plug wire spark plug tester goes into here so we turn it over and I know you can see the spark in the camera on that one but when I tested it it showed almost no spark so I don't know if water got in to the top part of the motor here during the pressure washing and somehow reduce the you know as the top spins here it spins a magnet that goes by the coil and that's what generates the electricity I don't know if that got wet or not but what I'm gonna do because I don't want to give this back until I know that it's okay I'm going to remove this cowling and remove or I should say this cover and remove the cowling here to get at the coil I don't think I have to remove the air filter to get in there but that's what I'm going to do and just make sure everything is clean before I return it meanwhile we're still dealing with the remnants of Hurricane Henry Right now it's not raining, but uh, it's forecasted a lot more rain. This is our day two of the hurricane, and I was went out to Harbor Freight and picked up a generator, thinking that we were going to get the worst of it, but no go. So let me put the uh, time lapse on. I'm going to show you how I take this apart.
Well, that was a bear to remove. Well, let's look down on this engine. Here's my coil. Here's my starter. This is the magnet right here. And the coil between this spot and this spot is where it generates spark. You can see there's a there's supposed to be a gap right there, but it's hard to see. It's a very thin gap. It's like the width of a, sand, a piece of sandpaper. So I'm going to I gotta clean this up. It's just you can see stuff caked in here. Grass. Uh, what is this? Maple leaf. Maple leaf. The little helicopters that fall off. Leaves in there. A layer of gook over here over the uh, intake and the carb. So I'm just gonna clean this up. I'm gonna go find my vacuum and try to knock this out. So what I'm going to do is take the sandpaper 220 and work it. Oh, let's turn this. I have to work it in here. Like so. And try to clean this surface somewhat as well as the surface of this between this and the flywheel then we'll clean the surface of the magnet This they call a feeler gauge. They're all labeled. I don't know if you can see the numbers at all. And that's the thickness between or, or the gaps that's needed depending on what you're working on. And it goes up to pretty thin. Put one four and then this side here spark plugs. This is a bend of spark plug. So I'm going to take this and find out what the gap is inside um, here. Now if the gap, you do this, the gap is uh, thicker than the, your last feeler gauge, then you put two feeler gauge together. 
to create the gap. Point zero one two is my gap. <clears throat> On a coil, there's always a ground wire. So you can see the ends here, how rusted they are. So I'm going to clean these up. clean this surface up. Here's my magnet right here. It's like a wire brush to it. You can see how clean it is. So right now I have the coil loose. You can see I can slide it. We'll do one side first. Put my feeler in. Push it up against the feeler. And just hand tighten this. And it should be, when you slide it in and out, you should feel friction on the feeler. It should not slide in and out without any problems, but there should be a little tug to it. There we go. So we'll just snug this down. So now our coil is cleaned off. And the part where we get the magnet from is cleaned off. So now we should have no problems with the spark. It should run great. Now we gotta reverse this whole process. We have to put the cover back on the starter, which is this piece. Then I have to put the cowling back on. Then I gotta reinstall the gas can. 
with the support brackets. Rebolt all this. Reinstall my intake. So let's get going.
Hey, so more ran fine. Cut the grass as you can see behind me there. Uh, no issues with it restarting. So that was just a example of a good tune-up on a very old mower, riding mower. Again, that's a Toro 8, 825, I think it was. I think that thing's probably got to be 35, 30 years old, at least, uh, if not older. But the mower is getting tired. Each time you start it up, you got blue smoke coming out of the exhaust now, so the rings are starting to go. So I'm just gonna let them know that when it stopped running, it's done, to, it's, done. it's time to retire and uh, recycle it. So hope this video helped you guys out. Any questions, put them down below in the comments. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, please. All right, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Have a good one. Bye.